Hey everybody, it's Seth with Stuff Seth Makes, and in this video, I'm going to be making some metal and glass hanging shelves for a kitchen remodel. Originally, I wasn't going to do a whole video on this project because it was a customer project, and things always take longer when you're doing a video. But I was going to shoot some photos and some video to post on Instagram, and then that way the customer could follow along with the progress. And it's just that when I started shooting, I was just liking it, and so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do a whole video on it, and I'm glad I did. So I hope you guys will stick around for a few minutes and see how these shelves came together. I started by cutting the pieces for the rectangular shelves, and I went with 45 degree miters for these. Once those were cut, I used the flap disc to clean up the ends and give them a little bevel, and that way I get good penetration with the weld. Once those parts were prepped, I laid them out on my welding table. I'm using a CertiFlat welding table from weldtables.com. And I'm also using a few genuine speed squares from Eric over at Genuine Metalworks. The combination of a dead flat welding table and these speed squares is really helpful to keep your material square and flat while you're welding the parts together. I also use some scrap metal and some fixture clamps to make myself more or less of a jig and that way I can set up the parts exactly the same every single time. Using my 4 140 MP welder, I used the MIG process to tack the corners together. When I pulled it out of the jig, I checked it for square, and it was all good. I threw in the next set of parts, and sometimes I like to use an additional light aimed at the area that I'm going to be welding. Sometimes, depending on the position, I might get a little flare from my shop lights that makes it a little difficult to see my work area. So sometimes I just turn off the lights altogether and stick this little magnetic LED light nearby. I finished tacking the shelf sections, and after I confirmed they're all square, I finished out the welds. Then I took them over to my little workmate and ground down the welds in preparation for the next step. The next step is to cut the vertical pieces to length and to make sure that I got them all the same length, I lined up one end so they were all flush, then I clamped them in place in the saw and then I cut off the other end. To get the two tiers assembled, I used a combination of magnets, genuine speed squares and clamps. And once I got those parts where I wanted, I tacked them together, flipped it over and just repeated it on the other side. And then once those were tacked and I was happy with all the joints, I went ahead and finished out the welds. After finishing out the welds, I cleaned them up with the grinder in preparation for the next step. For these next welds, I laid my pieces on the welding table again and used a long level to make sure everything stayed straight. And I almost forgot to bevel the edges of these other pieces and this time I used my little Rikon belt grinder. Be sure to check out my grinder storage drawer video if you haven't seen it yet. I also took advantage of the magnetic edge on the level to help with the alignment. And then I could clamp it down and tack it and then finish out the welds. There's still another piece of this puzzle and that's the cross members at the top of the shelf that will be the part that actually attaches to the ceiling once they're installed. And once again I needed to make sure that they're all the same length so I clamped them together and cut them all at the same time. These cross members will get welded to the inside corner of the angle steel so I traced the shape so I'd know where to cut the notches.
To cut the notches, I installed a table accessory in the bandsaw and just cut along my lines. And of course, I also beveled these to make sure I got good weld penetration. Instead of leaving the remaining corner sharp, I wanted to put a radius on it, so I clamped them all together and I did them all at the same time. And of course, since these are going to hang from the ceiling, they need holes for the mounting screws. So while they were still all clamped together, I marked the holes so that they'd be in the same place too. Then I put them in this old drill press vise that belonged to my grandpa, and I used some tap magic cutting fluid to keep things smooth and cool. Well here's a fun fact, at least I think it's a fact. I used to think that the smoke meant I was burning up the drill bit, but it's actually a result of the cutting fluid burning. The fluid burns and takes the heat so that your bits have some protection from the friction. If I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments. Now I can clamp everything down to the table again and you can see how this new piece fits into place. After grinding down the welds one last time, I took a file to the inside corners to clean them up a little. I also sanded them a bit since they're headed off to powder coating next, but I'm not really sure the extra sanding was necessary because they're going to get sandblasted right before powder. But anyways, I dropped off the shelves and a few days later, I picked them up in all their satin black powdery coated goodness. I needed some kind of a spacer when I set the glass into place, so I used some of these little rubber dots like you'd put on the back of a picture frame. These brought the glass right up to the lip of the metal, and it gave me a little cushion too. Now the moment of truth. The glass going in for the first time since powder coating. And it's a perfect fit. These turned out so nicely, and I really like how clean and streamlined and modern they look. You know, it's always rewarding to see your final product completed, knowing you made it from scratch, and knowing how it looked before it started taking shape. I packed the shelves and shipped them across the country, and thankfully, they made it to their destination in Cape Cod safe and sound. My clients installed them in their new kitchen, and they were kind enough to send me some photos of the shelves in place. You may be wondering what these extra pieces are. Well, the client made a couple changes to the design of the kitchen, and that meant the specs they gave me for the shelves were now a little bit short. So they ended up making some little extension pieces to make up the difference. Not the ideal situation, but the important part is that they still love the shelves, and that makes me happy. So that's it for this project. I hope you enjoyed seeing it all come together. I know after building these, I definitely want to do a version for my own kitchen. Thank you so much for watching. You know all the youtube -y stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share. There's a bunch of links down in the description. I really appreciate you all, and I'm looking forward to bringing you more videos soon. Stay tuned.